So in part two of this video series on the Roomba J7, we're going to take a look at the map that it created with yesterday's mapping run and today's cleaning run, and we're going to judge it the way that our parents used to judge us when we brought home report cards. So here's the map with all of the obstacles it found up on top, and it wants us to review them and tell it what to do with them in the future. Now this um, is either weirdly configured or buggy. Which is weird to say about a, a iRobot app, because they're usually very bug-free. Okay, so here's the first thing. I have no idea what that is. But you're supposed to tell it to either that it's temporary, that it's no obstacle, that it misrecognized it, or add a keep-out zone. The add a keep-out zone doesn't work. For example, these, I know what this is. These are the uh, wires uh, in my home entertainment system. There's a computer there. Those are its wires. I definitely want to add a keep-out zone, but that button isn't working, if it's even meant to be a button. Maybe it's meant to be... Um, something to uh, advise you to create a keep-out zone, but that's kind of a weird way of doing it. Because again, it looks like a button. Maybe they'll fix that in the future, uh, or maybe they won't. So you have the option to contribute to the database, but I think I'm gonna uncheck that because I don't see any need for them to um, look at my wires. Okay, so there, this is some pickled stuff that my wife put there, so that's a, a temporary obstacle. I don't know what that is. Uh, wires somewhere floating in the air uh, okay so that looks like a piece of dirt to me so I'm gonna say no obstacle because I want um, the robot to clean that so that's a wire but it's not in the floor so there's really no reason to avoid that Though I don't blame it for asking that's a piece of dirt um, that it should have cleaned so that's definitely a misfire iRobot uses these to tune the algorithm so that's nice so let's take a look at the cleaning run that it did this morning. And there it is with all of its obstacles. Now, one thing I do want to mention, um, yesterday's cleaning run, which you could see on the bottom there, I said in the video that it took two hours, but it actually took an hour and 17 minutes. So that's actually considerably faster than uh, an i7 would have mapped that same area. But then again, see where it starts kind of in the middle of the whole floor plan? I've never had the i7 start from there, so I think that... Um, in light of this, a head-to-head -head challenge between the i7 and the J7 is in order, which means I'm going to have to torpedo my i7's map, which I don't want to do because it actually does a useful job every day. But that's what I do for you people. Okay, so let's go into the map. And I've already started removing some of the, um, the stupid boundaries that it created. I, I don't know who programmed uh, the automatic room dividing algorithm but it's ridiculous and it's never right in my experience so um, after I remove all of these I'm gonna show you how to separate the map into rooms and I'll also show you that one trick about how to make irregular room shapes that I made a video about but you get to see it here okay now before we make the room dividers I'd like you to uh, take a look at something Do you see this wall here where the divider is and then this wall to the left of it those are actually the same wall. So, uh, and that's not the only part of the map that it does this. Do you see the, um, down here, all right, that edge there, that wall, and then the one to the right, those are the same wall. And also over here in the kitchen, right there, how they're offset, that's not supposed to be that way. Those are supposed to be on the same line. So this is just gives you an idea of the inaccuracy of, um, this type of uh, VSLAM mapping. So here we've divided my kitchen from my um, living room. And at first I was going to make a regular old room divider, but then I decided why. Why should I do that when I can make that um, angled uh, irregular room divider that actually represents the way my kitchen is divided from the dining room. So that's how you do that. You make a line uh, where you want part of that irregular shape to be then you add your second line, and we're going to rotate this one because uh, there's um, like an angle there in the floor. If you're not sure what I mean, you will in a second. It looks like that. You can see that in many of my other videos. So now we have this um, upside down T-shape, sort of. Now all you need to do is remove that room divider, the long one. And once you get rid of it, the irregular shape remains. It's pretty neat. It's kind of a little trick that I discovered. I don't think anyone else knows about this unless they've watched that video I made. Um, iRobot customer service had no clue about it, but that could have been just 
one or two reps that I spoke to. All right, let's finish dividing this. So now I'm dividing, I'm creating an arbitrary division between my lounge and my dining room. There's no wall there or anything, but that's how I like to schedule my cleanings. Uh, and then we'll divide the bathroom from the hallway. Now these, um, this app is, it's a great app. I mean, all the mapping um, shortcomings of vSLAM aside, one of the reasons you get a Roomba um, is because of this, this first class app experience. There are almost no bugs in the app. Uh, it works perfectly. It's a pleasure to work with. It's very well engineered. There obviously aren't any weird translation artifacts that you get with um, Chinese products. So here we have the whole map divided. And now we're going to label the rooms. And this is another area where iRobot excels. You've got companies like, for example, the Dream Z10 Pro is my favorite robot right now. But what I absolutely hate about it is it's got like a tiny handful of room labels. Uh, and you can't make your own. You can't make custom ones. Like I have a hallway. It has nothing for hallway. There's, there's no room label for hallway. What am I supposed to do with it? Dream said they might address that, but we'll see. Now, iRobot doesn't only have um, a whole bunch of, of preset labels with icons, like a lot of them, um, mostly enough, but they also let you um, create custom names. So I don't need custom names for rooms because my rooms um, are all normal rooms. But if you get into making zones, which we're going to do in a second, then you might need um, custom names. So the first zone that we're going to make is going to be by the front door because I like to send the robot there. You know, that's where most of the dirt is. And I like that it now detects uh, carpet and puts it on, on the map. It didn't used to do that before. So front door is one of the default options. Look at how many they have. I mean, that's, that's just great. It, it's not hard to make these, these names. It's, I don't understand why the um, app makers or some companies just, you know, make a, a tiny handful and say, okay, I'm done. Let's go home for the day. All right, so now we're going to make another one for the area where my bird cages are. And this is where we're going to need a custom name because there is no default thing called bird cages. But that's not a problem with this app. So now we've got rooms, we've got zones. And this thing is, of course, fully Google and Alexa compatible. I could be like, hey, I'm not going to say the word, uh, go clean the bird cages. And it'll do it. The only issue is if I have multiple devices set up on, on Google, it'll send like five vacuums at once. So I have to specify the name of the vacuum, which is not always great at identifying. So I'm going to put a no-go zone where it wanted me to put one where those cables were. Um, like I said, it would be nice if it did it automatically. I don't even know why that looks like a button when you're reviewing the images. So there you have it. Um, the J7, uh, I like the object detection features. It does seem to navigate faster, clean faster, and better than the i7, but to be sure, I'll have to do a head-to-head -head comparison under ideal circumstances. Otherwise, it's just my impression. So thank you for watching. I'll have more of these types of videos soon. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Rumbato.